Unarius is a non-profit organization founded in 1954 in Los Angeles, California and headquartered in El Cajon, California. The organization purports to advance a new, interdimensional science of life, based upon, fourth dimensional, physics principles. It is recorded that in 2003 to four Unarius centers existed in Canada, New Zealand, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, and in various locations in the United States. Membership figures are unknown. Unarius is an acronym for Universal Articulate Interdimensional Understanding of Science. The founder, and subsequent channels and sub channels have written books filled with channeled dissertations from alleged advanced intelligent beings that exist on higher frequency planes. Over 100 volumes have been published since 1954. History The group was founded in February 1954 in Los Angeles, California by Ernest L. Norman (1904–1971) and his wife Ruth E. Norman (1900–1993). From the period of 1954 to 1971, when Ernest Norman still controlled the organization, the organization defined the mission as the explanation and promotion of an interdimensional science of life in the books he wrote. He said that he had channeled the material via his psychic connections with extraterrestrial intelligences. Between 1972–1993, while Ruth Norman guided it, the organization experienced renewed growth and public awareness. The mission became bringing Unarius to the masses. Ruth Norman granted interviews, appeared on Late Night with David Letterman and The David Susskind Show and kept very up-to-date technologically with a video production studio built in the late 1970s, when such equipment was still in its infancy. Unarius Video Productions began appearing on public access television cable TV stations all over the United States. In 2000, Diana Taminia stated that in several cities in Southern California, the local public access channels carried weekly showings of Unarian films. Unarius has been featured in countless newspaper and magazine articles as well as radio and television spots. After Ruth Norman's death in 1993, Charles Louis Spiegel, also known as Antares, became director, a post he retained until his death in December 22, 19 since Ruth Norman's death in 1993, the organization has struggled, particularly since 2001, when a space fleet landing predicted by Charles Spiegel in 1980 failed to occur. Unarans believe in immortality of the soul, and that all people have reincarnated many times. They also believe that our solar system was once inhabited by ancient interplanetary civilizations. The aliens are said to be human beings who have lived on Earth and on other planets outside our solar system. They are said to be more advanced than humans, spiritually and scientifically, while the group seems to have similarity to the Aetherius Society or to realism, as they emphasize space brothers who will come from the stars in 33 spaceships to improve humanity, these beliefs are not held by all Unarians and in fact, are discounted by many as contradictory to true Unarian principles. In his book, The Truth About Mars, Ernest Norman claimed that the Chinese evolved from ancient interstellar migrants who began colonizing Mars a million years ago. They are reported to have returned to Mars, where they live in underground cities, after being attacked by natives of the Earth. A group which had become separated did not return with them and this group branched off and formed the various Asian racial genotypes. Topic. Founders 
Ernest Norman claimed to have been a child prodigy, having read all his father's a physician from Scandinavia books eagerly, self-educating himself alongside his formal schooling. He also claimed that as a child, he performed to family, neighbors and teachers unexpected feats such as moving a heavy rabbit hutch using Archimedean principles and small logs, building radios and winning arguments with parents and teachers at an early age. According to Unarius, Ernest Norman was a scientist, and an aeronautical engineer from whom the idea of the television tube was stolen. Claiming to possess psychic ability, he began his metaphysical career reading palms and also claimed to have told women of their loved ones' whereabouts and often deaths during the World War II years of 1942-1945. When this practice of describing fatalities allegedly lowered morale at war plants where he worked, he left and started to give lectures of his own philosophy in theosophical churches during the mid to late 1940s. Previous to meeting Ruth and the beginning of their mission, Ernest Norman gave psychic readings at spiritualist churches. Ruth Norman was the oldest of eight children, born in 1900. She took many jobs early on to help support her family, and worked as a fruit packer, and at other various jobs, including as a live-in maid. Her first marriage produced a daughter. After this she worked at many jobs including store clerk, nanny, short order cook, waitress, ran a real estate office and eventually owned and managed some property. She had purchased a motel, run a restaurant, worked at a cannery and worked in numerous other professions during her first 50 years. Both Ernest and Ruth had experiences in spiritualism before the UFO theme became common in the late 1940s. By the early 1950s, mystics at a psychic convention she attended told her that she was being followed around by long-bearded wise men carrying books and that she would help bring in these books in her future. This same thing had been told to Ernest by other mystics at this same convention and when the two met and later married. Books date their marriage to 1954, and their anniversary is celebrated by Unarius on February 14. Tominia states that their union brought forth their mission. Within weeks, Ernest began to produce, by channeling, the first Unarius book, The Voice of Venus. Ruth was later known within the group as both Ayashana, 1972-1979, and Uriel, 1980-1993. Topic Early years Ernest Norman became a channeler, the process by which he wrote his books. Unarian channeling is a process of relaxed contemplation in which the practitioner closes the eyes and enters into a composed state, allowing thoughts and images to flow freely, as he or she voices messages received from a supposedly higher consciousness, or other beings which speak to or through him or her. Coupling channeling with past life readings, the Normans developed a devoted following. Ernest Norman's first books contain themes similar to those of other metaphysical American religions and early 1950s contactees. While the Normans had dealings with other early contactee groups, initially Ernest Norman concerned himself with the spiritual nature of planets and their supposed history. He briefly mentioned flying saucers, saying that residents of more spiritual worlds were concerned about atomic testing and responded by making their spacecraft visible and increasing contact with Earth people in order to attract attention. Ernest Norman claimed to receive transmissions from Mars and Venus, the homes of great teachers and ascended masters who described their cities to him, altogether, channeled descriptions of seven spiritual planets, including Venus claim to be advanced teaching centers, comprise the set of books known as the Pulse of Creation series. The Normans operated out of their home, and in the 60s and early 70s, they moved to different cities in California, eventually settling in Escondido. During that time, Norman and Ruth claimed past lives as Jesus and Mary Magdalene respectively, as well as other famous people. 
In 1970, Norman channeled his prime lesson book for a student of the science, The Infinite Concept of Cosmic Creation, The Formation of the Mission in February, 1954 by Ernest and Ruth Norman, led to the publication of the Voice series of books. The first book, Voice of Venuses, 1956, concerned a, a psychic trip to Venus and described the advanced wonders of that civilization. Now known as the Moderator, he explained the existence of healing wards on that planet where troubled souls go to recuperate from traumatic experiences. He explained this book was not channeled in the usual type of meditative, trance like state or in a darkened room, but spoken normally and recorded on tape. Norman generally held modern spiritualist and theosophical movements and practices to be backwards and less enlightened. The work describes communication from Mal Var of Venus who gives a tour of the Venusian capital. In the work, Venusians are described as having energy bodies and living in a higher vibratory plane that would be invisible to a human were he to stand in the middle of the capital city known as Azure. The planet Venus and its culture are said to be more spiritual than that of the Earth and that more advanced Earth dwellers visit and study on Venus when they sleep. Healing wards for human suicides, alcoholics, the mentally impaired and similar human wreckage exist in Azure and these souls are treated with positive energy and light to help them reincarnate with greater integration. The Voice series consists of seven books, The Voice of Venus The Voice of Eros The Voice of Orion The Voice of Hermes The Voice of Muse, Unarius and Elysium The seven books describe the seven planes of Shambhala, which are claimed to exist outside the convention conventional atomic spectrum and our spiritual or non-physical worlds. Each plane has a specialty in the teaching of advanced principles, for the betterment of an individual's progressive evolution from life to life. The plane specialties are Venus – Healing Eros – Science Orion – Education Hermes – Philosophy Muse, the arts. Unarius, leadership. Elysium, devotion. These books, authored by Ernest Norman, along with the infinite concept of cosmic creation, which were a series of 13 lectures given in 1956 and later compiled into book form with seven advanced lesson courses, constitute the early teachings and beliefs of Unarius. The Voice series books are written with famous past Earth denizens acting as the tour guides for these various planes. Topic: Origin of name. Unarius is an acronym which stands for Universal Articulate Interdimensional Understanding of Science. Topic. Classification as a religion Unarius, as an organization, is strongly opposed to its common classification as a religion. Unarians consider their teaching or beliefs as a science and not a religion and assert that they practice a science that teaches the spiritual understanding of high energy physics and reincarnation. Saliba points out that Unarius lacks the main elements that one normally associates with religion, e.g., a hierarchical structure, priests and clergy, initiation rites, weekly services or ceremonies. Neither do the members offer prayers to God or higher entities. Unarius feels more comfortable with the world spiritual, and admits that its teachings are spiritual and that human beings have a spiritual nature. Notwithstanding, the beliefs of Unarius do satisfy many religious criteria in that spiritual reality is taught, humans develop their spiritual potential over lifetimes, the concept of the Space Brothers is basically a supernatural assumption as they seem different in kind, and are empirically unprovable, it involves a Western concept of good and evil and an Eastern concept of karma, higher entities are channeled, the texts read like sacred scriptures, it's system of beliefs can explain or dispel all phenomena, and thus satisfy all questions of meaning for adherence. 
Because of this many writers regard it as a religion, Ernest Norman presents the case against religion in several books, most notably The Infinite Contact, copyrighted in 1960, which describes in detail the origins of Christianity as rooted in Mithraism, Zoroastrianism and assorted ancient belief structures. Norman agreed with Karl Marx that religions were the opium of the people and yet also claimed to realize that many individuals were still at such a point in their evolution where religion still served a positive purpose and kept them from harming their fellowmen. Unarius calls its content and activities teaching interdimensional science. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Principles and Beliefs. Unarius was established to teach the fourth dimensional science aka the science of life which incorporates harmonic frequencies karma reincarnation past life memories channeling and an elaborate cosmology of spiritual planets central tenets of the belief system include contact with the space brothers and a millenarian prophecy that predicts a mass landing of starships the science asserts that everything is energy, atoms, higher knowledge, our bodies and our experiences. This energy vibrates in frequencies and waveforms. Understanding these vibrational energies allows contact with all things, higher intelligence, the advanced teaching centers and our past lives. By being in tune with spiritual frequencies we can heal ourselves of mental and physical illness. Saliba summarizes Unarian belief under four basic themes, 1 intelligent life on other planets, galaxies, 2 an infinite creative intelligence God, 3 that human beings are developing into an advanced state of consciousness, 4 the millennial hope of the advent of a landing. According to Unarius, the purpose of the research institution is to awaken the individual to previous life encounters, the clairvoyant aptitude of the mind, and the reality of one's spiritual connection. Practicing Unarans hold the following beliefs. Everything is energy. Energy is never created or destroyed, it merely changes form. You are energy and the energy that comprises you is never destroyed, it just changes form. You, as a form of indestructible energy, possess a soul that has recorded data from past lives. All that is currently happening to you has their origins in past lives and past actions. To progress one must record more positive actions than negative actions. Negative acts must be compensated for by positive acts. Various strata exist outside of physical worlds where beings of higher and lower nature reside. These are the primary principles as explained by Norman in The Infinite Concept of Cosmic Creation, copyright 1956, 1960 edition. For the practicing Unarian, these are the most important aspects of Unarius. Although the group is generally known for its predictions regarding flying saucers landing on Earth, Ernest L. Norman stressed these scientific core understandings as the key to personal development and mastery over material circumstances and in one instance derided flying saucer chasers as just another manifestation of people pursuing an escape mechanism. Topic. The 1970s With the death of co-founder Ernest in 1971, the mission was continued by his wife and partner Ruth. New sub-channels now authored the books with her. The two sub-channels, Thomas Miller Cosman and Louis Spiegel Antares, are credited on a number of the organization's books starting in 1972, after a channeling revealed a lifetime lived in ancient Atlantis with the name Ayashana. She adopted the name Ayashana during this period, altogether she claimed over 200 previous lives. 
Much of Unarian cosmology and lore revolves around the past lives of Uriel. From 1954 to 1974, meetings were held in Ruth Norman's home or at public meeting facilities. In 1972, the channeled messages referred to 33 worlds of an interplanetary confederation. These worlds all had various problems and by communicating with Ayashana, many of their hang-ups were solved or on the way to resolution. Ruth became an exuberant visionary, and with help rapidly increased the messages from space. In 1973, she became known as Uriel the Archangel, said to be her higher self and to stand for universal, radiant infinite eternal light. In November 1973, Uriel purchased 67 acres in Jamul, California, for a proposed landing site for the Space Brothers. In 1974, in the Tesla Speaks Volumes, Uriel completely redefined the Unarian mission by introducing the concept of the Interplanetary Confederation and the prophecy of a 33 vehicle spacefleet landing, in which she began to play the role of cosmic emissary uniting the Confederation. The media joined in, the landing date was revised, and eventually pushed back to 2001. All unfulfilled prophecies were explained as being a reliving of Unarian past lives in the Isis Osiris cycle. In 1975, the organization moved its base from Glendale, California to El Cajon, California, where a store front center was opened. Unarius was also incorporated as a non profit, tax exempt, educational foundation. In El Cajon, Uriel became well known for driving a blue 1969 Cadillac Coupe de Ville adorned with airbrushed depictions of spaceships with a large metal flying saucer on the roof. The car remains with Unarius and is driven every year in the annual El Cajon Mother Goose Parade. In 1976, past life therapy called psychic group therapy became formalized as part of the curriculum, eventually became the main activity of students, and was regarded as a healing practice. The content of Unarian belief increased as these revelations evolved into collective biographies of members who are believed to have acted under Uriel on Earth and many other planets throughout millennia. Taminia comments that this type of collective weaving of past life narratives as a regular practice of intersubjectivity may be unique to Unarius. Most Unarans were skeptical about the future predictions of a spacefleet landing, also channeled by Louis Spiegel. Many Unarans felt that these predictions undermined the original mission of Ernest Norman and a falling out occurred. Circa 1980, Thomas Miller, the primary sub-channel, left the organization, leaving Louis Spiegel as the only sub-channel. From this point forward, ever more activities revolved around these predictions. Ruth Norman, now 80, participated less and less in the goings-on at the center and so Unarans turned primarily to Louis Spiegel, a.k.a. Antares, Vaughn, and Charles, for guidance and instruction. In the early 1970s, a conclave of light celebration was staged at the U.S. Grant Hotel in San Diego, California, and repeated yearly at different venues, and after 1975, at the Unarius Center in El Cajon, California. Every October, they stage their interplanetary conclave of light which will include a visit to the Jamal landing site, the release of White Doves, and 90 minutes of mental communication with the Space Brothers. In the late 70s, Unarius started to make films and videos. Topic. Schism Unarius generally has two types of students, the followers of Ernest Norman's original texts and works and those who believe in every channeling that occurred after his death. The latter group is often blamed by the former for the ridicule and mockery the organization has received by the general public since the early 1980s and more so in the Internet age for the conversion of the group to a flying saucer group. Topic. 
The 1980s The Unarius Center reached its heyday in the 80s. The early 80s brought about the development of a video production studio and the marketing of Unarius videos through public access television cable TV channels all over the nation. From a public relations standpoint, Unarius made big inroads during this period, with new centers being opened up in the United States, Canada and Nigeria. During this period, the public identity of the organization changed from one which was teaching a metaphysical science of life to that of a flying saucer group. In 1984, Uriel declared Spiegel to have overcome his past negative karma as the fallen angel, Satan, and renamed him Antares. Subsequently, he channeled elements of the millenarian prophecy, including a new planet Midan which would send a spaceship in the year 2001 in 1984. Unarius also held its first annual Interplanetary Confederation Day, later called the Conclave of Light, which commemorates the union of the planets under the guidance of Uriel. Altogether, Uriel directed the organization for two decades and published over 80 books. Uriel broke her hip in 19 1988 and the next year her health began to slip. Topic: The 1990s. Ruth Norman, after several falls and surgeries in the late 80s, had more limited physical contact with the students and members but said she was psychically communicating with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Uriel became bedridden, rarely visiting the center herself, and let members know that her work was over. She died in 1993. Her death disconfirmed a long-held prophecy that the landing would take place in her lifetime. Her will stated that she would return with the Space Brothers in 2001. Louis Spiegel assumed leadership in the organization. As director, Spiegel wrote many books on reincarnation and consciousness. Unlike the Normans, he did not claim to have made psychic, mental voyages to other planets. He has been known to claim he's channeling Uriel herself. After Ruth's death and into the 1990s, some long term students left over disagreements with Antares. These members wished to return focus to the original teachings of Ernest Norman and the more scientific aspects of Unarius. Some students disputed the importance of Uriel and prophecies concerning her. Spiegel died in December 1999, and in 2000, a board of directors formed to guide the center. The board legitimated its cooperative authority through channeled messages, in particular from Uriel and Antares, who are now Space Brothers. Channeling explained that the Space Brothers are actually guiding the world invisibly and cannot become visible until the world becomes less warlike. Routinization of charisma in this organization thus proceeded smoothly, channeled advice and the invocation of past life memories confirming the need for cooperation. Students also left or became home study students because they disagreed with the channelings of Louis Spiegel, particularly one which claimed that it was time for Ruth, then quite ill but still living, to return to the unseen world. This was in complete opposition to previously expounded Unarian principle, wherein members, no matter how far advanced, never engaged in interfering with or predicting future human activities. Many Unarians perceived this as a power grab against Ruth Norman. In the belief system of the school, this was related to a negative reliving. Of a previous existence, creating false, negative messages. Ruth Norman has been criticized for her flamboyance and costumes worn in later years. Alex Hurd, in Apocalypse Pretty Soon, travels in End Time America ISBN 0 385 49852 7, quipped of her that she was a true American original who combined the couture sensibilities of a drag queen with the joie de vivre of a frisbee-chasing Irish setter." 
Tamania stated in the year 2000, that the local public access channels carried weekly showings of Unarian films in several cities in Southern California. Topic 2001 With 2001 having come and gone, and no space fleet landing having occurred, Unarius as an organization demonstrates both a returning to its roots and the principles, books and works of Ernest Norman, while simultaneously demonstrating a belief in a future landing by extraterrestrials to assist humankind. With the passing of Louis Spiegel in late 1999, the organization has formed a small council which shares leadership and management responsibilities. Unarius continues to be active both in the U.S. and in several European countries. According to Zeller, the millennial aspect of Unarius reverted to a more privatized rapture oriented millennialism after the death of Uriel. He stated that this more individualized approach confirms the quasi-rapture orientation of Ernest Norman. 2001. See also Aetherius Society Share International New Age Theosophy UFO equals equals footnotes <laughs>